I'm here with Karen Brooks Hopkins, President Emerita of the Brooklyn Academy of Music, known as BAM. Karen Brooks Hopkins, inspiring memoir of 36 years at the world famous cultural institution, is a great read, and she's here with us now to talk about it and her wonderful career. So Karen, in tough times like these, people really turn to the arts. And of course, people turn to BAM and so many other artistic institutions. Why was it important for you to write this book? You know, it was sort of a remarkable period of time. I was at BAM for 36 years. And really, I think that BAM and the arts community in Brooklyn really powered up the brand Brooklyn that we know today. And that during my time, we kind of went from Manhattan wannabe to the coolest neighborhood on the planet. Awesome. So I felt that the story had to be told. The book is filled with all kinds of authors and uh, artists and performances and all of the crazy stories around these performances. Princess Diana coming to BAM, Paul Simon's wow. month at BAM, Ingmar Bergman's work at BAM. So there's a lot of that. And then there's also really the story of Brooklyn and its evolution the good and the bad. Um, and so I felt that that was really a story worth telling, that it was a great New York story. And um, I was there for so long that I had so many memories and I, I'm proud to have had the opportunity to write it. Well, and we're proud to be able to work together with you. We've worked together with All Arts, WNET's multi-platform arts initiative, allarts.org. And one of the things that we worked on was about the iconic director Peter Brook and that was one of the hallmarks of your work at BAM. Tell us about that. Peter Brook was a great director. He recently died at age 97 about um, six weeks ago, two months ago and he had a remarkable run as an artist and we were very proud to present his work at BAM many times. His legendary piece the Mahabharata which was nine hours long and was involved building a whole <laughs> theater. There's a whole chapter about that story in the book. And um, when artists like that came to BAM, it really began to change the situation in terms of driving audiences to Brooklyn, to our institution, and to see work that was challenging, things that they weren't going to see on Broadway. And certainly a nine hour Peter Brook play was one of those yes. things. How were you able to get? fundraisers and donors to support that kind of work because it was different it was groundbreaking and you know it wasn't something that was something people were familiar with was it a tough sell but you did it it was a tough sell but we almost did it based on the fact that it was a tough sell <laughs> in other words we would say to people you know your friends are gonna find their way to Lincoln Center all by themselves but they need you to bring them to BAM so it became kind of almost a macho thing, a, a thing for people to come over that bridge, uh, the Manhattan audience, and then of course we drew more Brooklyn audience. And, <clears throat> and over time we built the youngest audience for sophisticated, serious theatrical work, music, dance, theater, opera. And um, when we opened the cinemas in 1998, it added 200,000 people wow. to the audience. The youngest audience, the cheapest ticket, kept the lights on 365 days a year. Now the movie business has changed. Very much but so. But the story of how that transformation took place is also in the book. And as I say, it's a great story of how the arts can transform any neighborhood because the arts bring out the best of what is there. In BAM and then it hit me. You talk also about leadership, innovation, even urban revitalization as you mentioned about Brooklyn. And under your direction, BAM became, as you said, some a place to go and also Brooklyn became very different. What are some of the hallmarks of good leadership and innovation that people can find in the book that you think are important? First of all, there's a lot of information about fundraising, there's a lot of information about leadership. In the book, I break down an annual campaign and all of the ways that it should be supported, and I think that this is useful information for anyone serving on a board, whether it's the arts or another type of charity. 
And uh, if you're involved with not-for-profit uh, organizations, there's a lot in the book that I think will interest you. But honestly, what we did was build a brand. What we did was find the sons and daughters of people who uh, supported the traditional Manhattan-based institutions. So what we tried to do was find audiences in three ways and find supporters in three ways. They were uh, people and businesses that had an interest in Brooklyn um, and were, were based there. There were people that simply loved the work and then there were a community people that really wanted the neighborhood to be successful. And the mix of these people joined forces and out of that we built an incredible base of support. It was really um, a remarkable thing and part of the story is is that we were all there for so long. Harvey Lichtenstein, yes. my boss, he was there for 32 years, I was there for 36 years. Wow. Joe Malillo, our artistic mm -hmm. director, was there for you know 38 years. You know, we, we all gave it our lives and that's a great story too. What does it mean when you fully commit yourself to something over the long haul? Too many times these days, you know, kids move in and out of jobs very quickly. But by staying so long, I was really able to see generations of artists and work and opportunities uh, for, for our audience and for our uh, artists. And to create a world-class arts institution, Brooklyn Academy of Music. So I know you're retired from BAM, but you're not retired. I know that no, very well. That's true. What are you up to these days? I am working on several different projects. Um, I'm actually involved with producing a play that involves John Totoro and Marissa Tomei, and that's been very exciting. It's an adaptation of a Philip Roth uh, book, so that's been pretty wild. I've been doing some work for the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, uh, but my main gig has really been on behalf of the Onassis Foundation, and uh, we have a number of projects in our cultural center, including a digital media lab, a poetry festival coming up, and a podcast called Live from Mount Olympus, oh, which wow. is for tweens. It's on the PRX wow. platform, and it's, it's theatricalizations with a great, amazing cast of Greek myths. So I'm like so busy. It's really exciting. Well, you are very exciting. I'm going to check that out for our public media audience. It's on PRX. That's a part of public media. And thank you, Karen Brooks Hopkins, author of BAM, and then it hit me for joining us here on WLIWFM.